In this particular video, we're going to be looking at a cryptic example from the textbook. Uh, our author claims that this particular set is a field, but he doesn't say anything about why it's a field. And in fact, the only stuff that he actually says is some cryptic information that the inverse of this element is supposed to be this element. In other words, the author is saying that a plus b times the square root of 2's multiplicative inverse should be that particular uh, number. Uh, he is also implicitly saying, but not completely addressing the fact about why this is actually inside his set. In other words, the author has not really addressed why these two circled numbers are rational, because they have to be rational in order to put this expression in this particular set. And the other thing that I want to mention right now is that this particular set is usually referred to as q adjoin the square root of 2. The easiest thing to verify in this is the, the inverse relationship. So let's go ahead and get that done because that's sort of the thing that a student who's stumped on this example is likely to, to be thinking of as the first starting point. So if I look at a plus b times the square root of 2, and I multiply it by a over a squared minus 2b squared plus minus b over a squared minus 2b squared times the square root of 2, uh, I distribute this out. And when I distribute this out, I'm going to get a squared over a squared minus 2b squared. And then I'm going to have minus an ab over a squared minus 2b squared times the square root of 2. And then I'm going to have a plus ba over a squared minus 2b squared times the square root of 2. And then finally, I'm going to have a minus b squared uh, over a squared minus 2b squared times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is going to be a 2. Now, when I start looking at these things, it doesn't take long to realize that this and this add out to be 0, so they drop out. And uh, I can clean the rest of this up and realize that it's a squared over a squared minus 2b squared minus 2b squared over a squared minus 2b squared. And that is just a squared minus 2b squared over a squared minus 2b squared, which is a very fancy name for 1. So yes, we do have, yes, we do have that a plus b times the square root of 2's multiplicative inverse can be given by a over a squared minus 2b squared plus minus b over a squared minus 2b squared times the square root of 2. Now, I do want to mention in passing that these numbers turn out to be rational because it turns out that the only way a squared minus 2b squared can be equal to 0 if a and b are rational is if a and b are both 0. And I actually do want to address that for just a minute. So I want to kind of look at this. So let's make a note. If a and b are both rational and at least 1 of a or b is not equal to 0, then a squared minus 2b squared cannot be equal to 0. And here's why. And this should look fairly familiar to you if you've ever looked at a proof of why the square root of 2 is not rational. Uh, basically, what we've got is suppose a squared is minus 2b squared is equal to 0. Well, that's going to say that a squared is equal to 2b squared. And that will say that a over b quantity squared is equal to 2, which would say that the square root of 2 is a over b, and a over b is a rational number. And we all know that the square root of 2 is not rational, so there is our contradiction. And hence, 
if at least one of a and b is not zero then a squared minus 2b squared is not going to be zero when we know that a and b are both rational numbers. So basically what the author has shown, or rather what the author has hinted at, is that yeah, we can always find a multiplicative inverse that will lie inside this set. But that's the last thing that we need to basically do in showing something as a field. In other words, it's important to realize that what we've done here is not the proof that q adjoined to square root of 2 is a field. So this is not the proof that q adjoined with the square root of 2 is a field. It is the last step of that proof. And so what I want to do is I want to put in the rest of the proof. So what I want to do is I want to ask the question. So what I want to do is I want to ask the question that looks like this. So here's my question. Uh, why is this guy a field. Now I could start out by proving that it's a ring from all of the ring axioms and then prove that the multiplication is commutative and then prove that the, there is a one inside the set and then uh, prove that everybody has multiplicative inverse. But that's a lot of work and what I want to do is I want to try and be a little bit more clever. I want to start with the definition of q adjoin the square root of 2. So let's just rewrite that definition down. And what I want to notice is that this is definitely a subset of the real numbers and the set of real numbers is a field. And fields are rings so the set of real numbers is a very special kind of a ring. In other words, what we've got is schematically a picture that looks like here are the reals, and inside of that is a set that we're trying to figure out something about. And this particular kind of a schematic way of thinking about it and recognizing that R is a ring itself raises the question, is Q adjoined with the square root of 2 a subring of the real numbers. And I know how to figure out whether or not a subset is a subring. Uh, I look at the subring criteria. I do want to make a note here that it's clear that this set is not empty since, and there's lots of elements to pick on, I will look at 1 plus 2 times the square root of 2. This clearly belongs to Q adjoined with the square root of 2 because 1 and 2 are rational numbers. And I know how to do the subgroup, rather the subring criteria. So what we're now going to do is we're now going to apply the subring criteria to the set Q adjoined with the square root of 2. And what that means is I want to look at letting x and y be inside my set, and I need to show that x minus y is inside that set, and I need to show that x times y is inside the set. Because if I have both of these two things, then I am going to know that this particular critter is a subring 
of the real numbers, and hence, it's a full-fledged ring. And once I know it's a full-fledged ring, I can then worry about whether or not it has all of the properties that are needed to show that it is a field. So now I have a strategy. We're going to look at these two things being, we're going to basically be looking at assuming this and showing these two things. Now, saying that x and y are inside q adjoined 2 says that we can say x is equal to a plus b times the square root of 2 and y is equal to c plus d times the square root of 2 where a, b, c, and d all belong to the field of rational numbers. And now look at this. x minus y is nothing more than a plus b times the square root of 2 minus c plus d times the square root of 2. And when you do the algebra, that's going to be a minus c plus b minus d times the square root of 2. And this number is rational. And this number is rational because a, b, c, and d are all rational. And so that puts x minus y into q adjoin the square root of 2. So we're halfway done. Well, let's now look at x times y. That is a plus b times the square root of 2 times c plus d times the square root of 2. And when we distribute this out, we're going to get ac plus ad times the square root of 2 plus bc times the square root of 2 plus bd times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is times a 2. And now we can clean this up and write this as ac plus 2bd plus ad plus bc times the square root of 2. And again, since a, b, c, and d and 2 are rational numbers, that number is in q. And since a, b, c are all rational, this number is in q. And that means that we now have that x times y belongs to q adjoined with the square root of 2. And therefore, we can say, by the subring, by the subring criteria theorem, this guy is a subring of the real numbers, and so this guy is a ring. Now, a ring is not the same as a field, and we still have some work to do to get that uh, q adjoined the square root of 2 is a full-fledged field instead of just being a ring. So what we want to do now is we want to look at uh, what else can we say. Well, we know that q adjoined with the square root of 2 is a subring now of r, and we know that R is a full-fledged field. And we're going to use the fact that R is a field to force a whole bunch of things about Q adjoined the, with the square root of 2. Since times is commutative, in the field R, and this set here is a subset, that's going to be enough to force times, I'm going to say it as times must be, commutative,
in Q adjoined with the square root of 2. Uh, in other words, commutativity of multiplication is inherited from R. And uh, it means, the, and, it, and it's also worth noting that, that what this means is that Q adjoined with the square root of 2 is now a commutative ring. Uh, I also want to notice that since 1 can be written as 1 plus 0 times the square root of 2, and 1 and 0 are both rational numbers, that puts 1 inside Q adjoined with the square root of 2. So we now have Q adjoined with the square root of 2 is a commutative ring with identity. The next thing that I want to notice is that since R is a field, R has no zero divisors. And the fact that R has no zero divisors is going to say Q adjoined with the square root of 2 cannot have any zero divisors. And that means that at this particular point, we now know that Q adjoined with the square root of 2 is an integral domain. It is a commutative ring with identity that has no zero divisors. And finally, I want to go back and remember what we learned at the very beginning of the video. We also already know that if a plus b times the square root of 2 belongs to q adjoined with the square root of 2, and a plus b times the square root of 2 is not 0 plus 0 times the square root of 2, which is the 0 element of this ring, uh, then we happen to know that this guy has a multiplicative inverse element that just happens to be a over a squared minus 2b squared plus minus b over a squared minus 2b squared times the square root of 2, and that this guy happens to be inside our set q adjoined with the square root of 2. This finally completes the proof that q adjoined with the square root of 2 is a field. Now, before I end the, the uh, video, I want to introduce a couple of vocabulary words, and I want to schematically look at what's going on. What we have here is a field, namely R. And he is our super field. He's the biggest field that we're going to be thinking of in, in this particular example. Then we have this intermediate field, Q adjoined with the square root of 2. And then we have a little field, which is Q. And in this kind of a picture, we will be referring to Q as the base field. And the vocabulary that I want to introduce is that we're going to say that Q adjoined with the square root of 2 is a subfield of R, and we're also going to be saying that Q ad adjoined with the square root of 2 is an extension field of the base field Q. And in uh, towards the end of the, the class, this kind of picture and this kind of language is going to play a very important role.